What's up, First Community? My name is Jay Flores. I am the creator of It's Not Magic, It's Science. I'm host of Make 48 on PBS. I'm an American Ninja Warrior, and most importantly for today, I'm a huge fan of First, of this entire community, and especially the More Than campaign that is going on uh, right now. So I'm really excited to be here with all of you to discuss the, the campaign and our very special guest, Alyssa Carson. So I'm going to go ahead and see if uh, we can add her in to I'm inviting her to join us. And um, I am really excited to see what all of you will be able to bring in from her. There we go. There she is already. That was pretty quick. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no, I'm super excited to be here. Great. Well, our community is getting excited. We've got people in from all over the world. I see Brazil. I see different parts of the United States uh, and a lot of excitement. Libya's in the chat as well. So if everyone can go ahead and share where you're coming from, what team you're on, what you're excited about for this conversation and the More Than campaign. Um, and if there's any questions you have, definitely start throwing them into the chat. I see Mexico, more Brazil, Arizona. This is really exciting to see our community joining from all over the world. And thank you for, for joining us today and being able to share a little bit about yourself and um, your inspiration around the I Am More Than campaign. So let's start there. Like, What I liked about your post um, in introducing the campaign is you had two pictures. You had kind of like a now and uh, where it began. So let's start with the now. Who is that person that was, in, I believe, in front of an airplane? Um, could you give us a little bit of background on yourself for the community that hasn't met you yet? Yeah, totally. So as of now, I am currently a senior in college. I am stu I'm studying at Florida Tech. So um, my focus is in astrobiology, which is essentially just like general science and space. I will likely end up working more within like the realm of microbiology and like bacterial life and then connecting that to space. So that's kind of actively what I'm doing. Um, I'm also a pilot, a scuba diver, skydiver aquanaut, researcher, kind of any and everything in my free time, pretty much. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of always had a passion for space. So was um, always looking for cool stuff to kind of add to the resume. That is incredible. I, I mean, just getting scuba certified and is a cool thing on its own. But then you're also flying planes and doing all these other incredible things. And it seems like it's all tied towards getting you to space in some point, right? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, when I was younger, I had like the interest of pursuing some kind of space career. Obviously, astronaut always sounded the coolest. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've kind of just been figuring out where within the space industry, like, what I was good at kind of matched with plus what I was interested in. So it's kind of how I ended up in like the realm of astrobiology. And then uh, within um, like kind of beyond that, I will probably end up working in the field. I'll apply, of course, to the astronaut selection process. And if I'm mm -hmm. able to do that work from space, then of course, that's even better. That's so cool. I, I love that you've kind of been able to pair all these different experiences towards your like long-term goals. And they may sound very different to some people, but you've kind of got this vision as to where it could be. Um, and it seems like our community is loving it. The hearts are going crazy on the side. I see Puerto Rico, shout out to Puerto Rico, Canada, Texas, um, India, Canada. So th uh, you guys have an awesome guest to be able to ask lots of questions from today. Um, that's a little bit of background on where she's at now. The next part I want to ask you, and I think the inspiration as to why you're part of the More Than campaign or what drew you to it may have a little bit to do with the other photo that you shared in your post, which was the younger version of you. I'm not sure if that was at a space camp or just something that you, you were kind of dressed up for. But um, tell us a little bit about the early beginnings of these dreams and then also how that ties into why you're excited to be part of the I Am More Than campaign. Yeah, totally. So that first photo basically was me when I think I was like seven-ish 
at the time, so very young. So when I was seven, I went to my first space camp. Um, and so I did a parent child with my dad. So it was more like a family camp. So he had to come to camp with me since I was so young. Um, and that photo is actually from my first rocket launch. So at space camp, we built our own model rocket and then we got to actually go out and launch it and experience that. And so that was afterward when I had like ran out and gotten my rocket that had launched um, and my dad had taken a photo. So um, overall, really, really fun experience. Pretty much like my background when I was younger within space, I was always curious with space. I was always asking my dad, you know, is space real? You know, what's out there? What's been going on? Um, but no one in my family really had any sort of background in science or space or anything similar. So my dad essentially told me a little bit about like the moon landings. And then beyond that, it was me, basically me hounding him for like photos, videos, and posters. And so like Space Camp was that first time I was really able to like be taught all this amazing information about space. And then then on, I was just like, yeah, I love this. I want to do something in it. And it from then on, I was just figuring out what within space I liked the most. Um, and so kind of connecting that to uh, this campaign, you know, I, uh, as you know, when I was young, saying I was interested in being an astronaut, throwing Mars out there, you know, a lot of those big goals were very unrealistic. Also, the stereotypical way of becoming an astronaut was definitely not something I followed. And so uh, a lot of the time, you know, I was either the youngest at different things. I was uh, pushing a lot of uh, typical molds within the STEM industry. And uh, that was simply just because I was passionate and I didn't see any reason why someone my age shouldn't be allowed to do a lot of these things. It didn't make any sense. Um, and so that's kind of what really excited me about this campaign was just kind of continuing to show the next generation that no matter what they're passionate about, you know, be vocal, try it out. There's no harm in asking. Um, and you definitely don't have to fit into those molds. So if you do feel like that you're outside of them, then definitely go for it. Um, because your dreams are still valid if you are breaking what is considered normal. Um, and I definitely think it's so important to kind of talk about some of these other areas or other ways to go about things. Because I know, Typically, I think when we talk about careers to young kids, it's always like, oh, you can be a doctor or a lawyer or kind of like the same old, same old. You know, we don't talk about like astrobiology or all these things that kids don't even know are possible because they could be super passionate about that as well. Absolutely. So I, I love that photo of you. I love how far you've come along that journey and that the way you said it, like, why can't I be doing this? There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to. I have a similar photo from my background where I kind of look back to my early times and I was in, in a box and you could just see curiosity in it. And I love that photo. I found it a couple of years ago because most of the times we look at boxes as these things that keep us somewhere, right? But that box in that case for me was a rocket ship. It was a race car. It was like whatever I wanted it to be. So I'd, I'd love for you to expand a little bit on like some of the boxes that people may have tried to put you in and how did you overcome that and continue towards these, you call them unrealistic. And I know sometimes we feel like, oh, like that's too far, or that's too big, or I shouldn't think dream like that because nobody that I know or nobody that looks like me has done this. How did you get beyond that so that you could see yourself in that space and that you were kind of fearless enough to push forward? Right. Yeah, it definitely came with a lot of time. Um, and then also being able to be more vocal about space and the things like that, you know, slowly came. Um, I definitely was a much quieter um, and more shy child. So I've definitely been able to grow on that. But definitely as far as like boxes, I mean, one, my age was a huge thing, you know, when I was trying to go about different things, you know, typically, since I was younger, I was, you know, less intelligent or wasn't really able to contribute. And it was very interesting, especially wanting to get involved in research, because sometimes having a younger perspective can make a really big difference depending on uh, what you're working on. And so it was really fascinating to have that 
but then also at the same time, you know, I was fortunate to join Project Possum and have them, you know, welcome me and eventually allow me to join that. It's been really nice even since I joined, you know, they have since allowed a lot more 18 year olds to join and, you know, contribute. So it's been really, really amazing to kind of push that boundary, but then also see it kind of see that door open for, you know, another kid who maybe has that same uh, interest. And then definitely at the same time, I remember there's been a few moments like I'm talking to someone who maybe already works in the space industry. And they're seeing me as like a young kid that probably just like, oh, space is cool. And so I used to throw like a few big words here and there, be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've done research with, you know, IVA spacesuits and try to convince them that I know what I'm talking about. And so that was always something that I struggled with because I wanted to be spoken to seriously, not as like, oh, cute, you know, a kid like space. And so that was something that I've kind of continued uh, to work on. And then as far as, you know, the idea of Mars, kind of like what you said, feeling unrealistic, I think a lot of that kind of came with confidence along the way, because there were many times, especially when the space shuttle program ended and things like that, where people would say, space is closed, there aren't astronauts anymore. And it eventually, you know, came up where I was like, no, it's not actually what's happening in space. <laughs> you know, I can share a little bit of information there. And so it's slowly build confidence and talking about your goals and your dreams, because it is super important to be able to be vocal and kind of stand your ground every now and then. That, that's wonderful. And I, I love that you pushed through it, you kept going, even when everything around may have felt like they're going in, you know, in a direction that wasn't your original dream. Um, as long as it's something that you're truly passionate about, I feel that you should keep pushing you know, just as passionately towards those those goals, um, and other opportunities will come. So you mentioned a lot around being young. And so a lot of this community, again, is mostly under 18, aside from our alum and, and sponsors and supporters, um, but they're doing really incredible things as young as four years old, six years old. And I, I look every time I go to a first event, and there's a little 10 year old girl that talks to me about her robot, I'm always blown away. And so did you have first experience and did any of that help kind of along this journey get to where you are today? Yeah, so I have. So I actually participated in a few um, first robotics competitions when I was a kid. So again, kind of uh, a little bit of background, but I was you know, always trying to get hands on experience. So that way I could figure out, okay, what do I like? Because I knew I liked space, but space is a very broad field. So I was all about experiencing different things to know, okay, did I want to build the rocket? Did I want to be an engineer? Did I want to be a scientist? You know, what was it that I actually wanted to do? Um, and so kind of participating in robotics was something that um, kind of played a role in that and figuring out, you know, what about it did I like? Um, but it definitely taught me a lot of skills, you know, not only just about robotics, but it also played into presentation skills. I remember being like one of the only people on my team, like bold enough to even like explain to the judges what our robot was. And um, there was actually, I'm pretty sure one of the competitions. So I had been to space camp by the time that I had um, started doing first robotics and I we had talked about different you know ways to move in space and so there was like a yaw maneuver um, and so I remember I was talking about the robot to the judges and I was like yeah it can do a yaw maneuver because that's just what <laughs> I was used to with space terms and they were like oh, what like what? <laughs> and I was like oh my bad <laughs> Um, so it was really cool to kind of make some of the robotics backgrounds with things that I had already learned about space and then kind of see that come together. Plus, it was a lot of fun to do it with friends and kind of have that activity. But yeah, overall, a lot of really great skills were learned from that. And like I said, it, even though I'm not like actively pursuing robotics specifically, you know, those skills will still be um, well, I will still carry. Absolutely. And I love how that it became like normal to you, right? Like using those terms and something that at first may have been, um, you know, something you had to grow into or learn about when people didn't believe in you because you were too young, that eventually just became a normal part of your vocabulary became something that was just like a part of everyday life. And I think that that's a very good lesson for our community when it comes to 
getting kind of to the edge or outside of their comfort zone in that maybe early on that was very challenging for you, but eventually became part of who you are, part of something that you viewed as uh, simple or easy for you, for you, right? Not necessarily for everyone. So do you have any advice for our students that um, maybe are a little bit nervous to try something new or to extend that comfort zone further than they've gone before? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think one thing to remember is a lot of the time when you are going out of your comfort zone, you it's usually a relatively rewarding experience or that's kind of how I always view pushing your comfort zone just because you know whether you end up going through with it or not I think that you learn something really important about yourself I know every time that I've pushed myself I've even surprised myself been proud of myself in new ways um, and all that is really meaningful you know it it's really cool sometimes to push yourself and then you know, kind of be like, wow, like I really did that. Like I didn't even know I was capable of doing that. And a lot of that can be really good just for figuring yourself out. Um, I know also it is really nice to have a support system in terms of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, and that can literally be anyone, whether it's a family member, friend, maybe a teacher or advisor or anything like that. Um, but I know that for me, kind of, I always had my dad always knew, I guess, when to push me. And he also knew where it went too far. And like where I was like, actually, this is very wrong. But I do know that there have been many things that I probably wouldn't have done if my dad didn't push me one little step yeah. further. Um, a great example of that is actually when I first started flying. So I wouldn't even be a pilot if it wasn't for my dad, mm -hmm. because I went to my first flight lesson. And I came home and I was basically telling my dad that I hated it. It was terrible. I didn't want to do it. And he was like, okay, Alyssa, you know, you don't have to, but give it one more chance. And then, you know, if you really don't like it, then let's, you know, well, you don't have to do it. So then I did it again. And then I came back and I was like, dad, it was so cool. We did this. And that. <laughs> um, I was absolutely amazed by it. And so, you know, sometimes it's those little words of encouragement to tell you, maybe try one more time and just see how it is. Um, another example was with when I did skydiving, I was so terrified. Um, I don't even think I would have done it if my dad was like, he was very strict with me. He was like, listen, you have to do it. Even though he was also kind of a baby, he's like, I would never skydive. <laughs> so it was very hypocritical, but also it was that push that I needed. So it's, it's nice to kind of have those people every now and then um, to get that push on yourself. But overall, it's always been rewarding. And it's really nice to kind of have that sensation um, of feeling proud after doing anything new. I think that's such an important point, especially for our parents and educators, guardians that are listening into the conversation around how that just little push, it doesn't, you, you, like your dad was scared to skydive too. You don't even have to do it or even feel that uh, this wild dream that a student is sharing with you is possible, but don't shut it down, right? Give them that one extra little push in the right direction and really cool things can happen. Um, and, and that confidence boost that a young child will get is so important from that. And I feel that that's from the adult perspective, the spirit of this campaign is allowing the students to really thrive and have the, the self-esteem that they need to succeed in whatever it is that they're passionate about. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, I've, in conversations that I've had with women, it was actually the opposite. There was someone that told them they couldn't do something right. or that girls didn't do that. And it always seems to me as absolutely unnecessary. It's like one of those comments that you should just keep to yourself. Even if you believe that this person can or cannot do whatever task that it is they want to go towards, there's absolutely no reason why you should shut that down. And so that's one of the challenges, no matter how crazy idea a young child uh, might have, I think our uh, adults should encourage that because in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, maybe that is very feasible, even if it isn't right now. The other thing is that little push in the positive direction instead of the negative can have a huge impact. Um, you kind of mentioned your dad, but are there any other role models that really helped you in that space or other places you looked for confidence, especially as a young girl in STEM, um, that helped you on that journey as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, my dad was always there um, just to basically just say, 
yeah, if you like that, keep doing it, you know, sort of thing. But obviously, it was really nice to meet people who worked in the space industry, and I could kind of look up to in that way. It was uh, very special to have that. Um, one in particular was uh, astronaut Sandra Magnus. So she is a female shuttle astronaut. So I met her when I was around nine. And I was basically asking her, you know, when did she decide to become an astronaut? What was kind of her story? And she told me that she was around nine when she got interested in space. And so for me, especially as a little girl, to hear someone that decided at a young age that they wanted to do this, and she was well accomplished at that point, had been to space multiple times, and seen someone that I could truly be like, okay, that could be me, you know, that mm -hmm. could be, uh, you know, me who had this dream at a young age and put in the hard work to make it into a reality. And so chats like that were always really amazing. Um, astronauts in general were always really amazing to meet, but a lot of the female astronauts I found really, really inspirational. Um, and so having those small moments, even if I wasn't able to talk with them for long, uh, made a big difference. That, that's wonderful. I think it's exactly what we're trying to get through this campaign is that it doesn't have to be this crazy heroic uh act of service it can just be a few words that really help a young child understand that yes i can do this or i don't have to fit the particular stereotype that i might see in my community or that i might have been exposed to earlier and i want to thank you because you're helping us do that right now in this conversation i'm seeing it in the chat people that are saying you inspired them to study more or to explore other options within space outside of the kind of or more mainstream things. Um, and, and we've got people from everywhere. Someone mentioned it's 5 a.m. In, in India. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning. Um, and we've got uh, a lot of inspiration going on here. So thank you, Vaughn, for living that. Um, and then also for helping us inspire that next generation or current generation, because a lot of our first students are doing really cool things already. Um, there's a lot of questions about Mars in the chat. Uh, I want to just kind of go back to the dream big kind of concept we were talking about earlier and like what what made you think that big right I, I want our community to understand that they're being very well prepared for really cool things in the future but those things will only happen if you set like a vision for it right if you're kind of just going with the flow you're going to gain a lot of cool experience from first but you've got to have a pretty cool vision in order to be able to apply that to, to, you know, things that are going to change the game, innovation and, and things that are really going to change the world. So where did that come from? And do you still continue to look at like those big long-term goals like that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I was young and first being exposed to space, I, you know, found Mars interesting. Um, and I just kind of thought it was a cool planet. Um, uh, and really, when I was like, oh, you know, I want to go to Mars, it was really just because I was young. I knew that no one had been to Mars before. And I was like, well, if no one's been there, why not go? You know, there must be something to find there. Um, but, you know, I do think that when space, when talking about space, you do have to think big picture. A lot of the work that we do in space is for a very long-term purpose. And so the more I was able to learn about space, the more passionate I became about it because I was starting to learn more of its purpose and more of its impact. And I think that really resonated very well. Um, but, you know, when right now, when we're looking at Mars, we are really looking at it as a way to, one, learn more about the planet. Um, obviously, a lot of the things that we do in space is to learn about uh, science, learn about our own planet. Um, but also, we're looking at different long-term implications. You know, we're seeing, is it possible to live on Mars? Is it possible to terraform Mars? Um, you know, could we potentially have Mars as like a second planet? And a lot of those are, you know, thinking about the future generations. You know, if, let's say, population continues to rise, could we potentially live on Earth and Mars? Um, also a big thing if we're looking at, you know, figuring out some of these issues with Mars to be able to live there, we would also simultaneously be solving some of the problems that we already have here on Earth. So to live on Mars, Mars' atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide, so we would obviously have to clean up Mars' atmosphere. If we're able to clean up Mars, we should obviously be able to clean up our own atmosphere using that same technology. So 
kind of the way I always viewed space was that space kind of pushes us to think outside the box because we have all these issues with space and we're thinking about it in a different way. And so we invent these new technologies, new ideas, and we're able to apply them to things that we have down here, even though we didn't even think that was the original use for that solution. Um, so that's been one thing that I always found fascinating about space. And so I saw it as like a bigger purpose in terms of space exploration and so as I got older I really just wanted to contribute to the space industry in any way I could because at that point I was like this is really important for us to continue space exploration so I just want to be there and contribute um, however however I can. I love that and are you able to apply that to your um, I don't want to say normal life but other goals that you have in life right like this this is kind of this big vision and what I take from this is allowing me to do things that I may not have kind of attempted or dreamed of because I have this longer term vision. Is that is that something that you apply to other aspects of your life? Yeah, I think so. I think another big thing is especially having like big long term goals, like, for example, becoming an astronaut. Obviously, when I was a kid, that was like a dream that would be, you know, 20, 30 years out. That was not something that I was going to be able to accomplish quickly. But I think that with that, it was always important to know of the smaller goals and being able to celebrate them just as uh, just as much as you would, you know, your long term goal. So, you know, even something as simple as making it through another year of school or any little success, I always thought was such a big win, because in the end, you are getting closer to that long term goal. So you might as well celebrate and be proud of all those little milestones that you take along the way. So I was always um, really big on just feeling accomplished for every little part, even, you know, some stuff that was super small, but even every day in school, I'm like, woo, went to all my classes today you know <laughs> sometimes you know you just need that little hype up and uh it makes a big difference so <laughs> i love that and the hearts went wild during that part of your discussion so i think people are really resonating with that i'm going to give everyone a little bit of homework i do something similar i call them rev goals so it stands for reverse engineered vision so you set these long-term game-changing visions for yourself things that would really kind of change the game for your life but then you reverse engineer what it takes to get there so something that may have seemed wild and insane like getting to mars over 20 years if you're taking you know steps towards that every year every month uh, that are a little bit more manageable feasible that then becomes possible long term although it may seem very crazy right now so uh, hopefully our community will look at that and then see how first and other stem experiences um, breaking down certain stereotypes or barriers can help you get down that path. So um, I appreciate you sharing that because I, I want all of our community to be able to dream as, as big and wild as, as they want, right? And to be able to use what they're learning from this experience on a team um, to do all kinds of great things in their life. So um, that leads me to just like, what type of advice do you have for youth that might be afraid to take those leaps or might be kind of like nervous to say like, yeah, I want to go to Mars or I want to, um, you know, create my own company, whatever it is that our students are dreaming about. Um, what advice do you have them for them to kind of just take that leap? Yeah, I totally think it is perfectly okay to be afraid of, you know, kind of putting those big goals out there. And, you know, typically, I think that if we have those big goals, they're typically in like the back of our minds, even if we're too afraid to really say that that's what we want to do. So, you know, I think once you kind of figure out what you're interested in, it's all about, you know, starting to put in that little bit of effort every now and then towards that goal. And it doesn't have to consume your whole life, because I do think that keeping a balance is really important. Um, you know, because for me, when I was younger, I was always excited to do things about space, because that was my dedicated time that I could work on my dream. And I could talk about space, because I was obviously a kid doing all sorts of other things, you know, whether it was hanging out with friends or sports or anything else. And so having that little bit of dedicated time can make a really big difference even if you're still figuring out giving yourself a little bit of dedicated time to be like hmm let me do a little bit of research let me start figuring out what I want to do um, also definitely be interested in mixing your interests I think so many people are interested in more than one thing and that is amazing um, and there's so many ways that we can mix that and I know that I typically see that a lot when 
people say that STEM is like only for people who like math and science and um, that kind of got kind of idea where we just pinpoint like you have to like this or you have to do this to pursue those careers but don't be afraid to mix them because you know I talk about all the time especially sharing to kids all the cool jobs that are involved in the space industry that um, that we don't even think about you know there's uh, psychology is huge you know how do these people live with the same people for months at a time um, the food get, that gets sent to space if an astronaut says they want a chocolate cake you know can we package a chocolate <laughs> cake and send it to space? I don't know. Someone has to figure it out. Um, and so there's all these things. So if you like space, but maybe also fashion or maybe cuisine or, you know, no matter what it may be, start doing a little bit of research. See if you can mix those and actually find something that you're truly, truly passionate about because now you're incorporating different aspects of your life that you really love. So, um those are kind of like the two biggest things I think, but also know that if, even if you don't know about it, it could exist because mm -hmm. um, that is absolutely huge. I even sometimes I'll even tell kids, you know, looking at the space industry, how fast it is growing right now, you guys can literally think of anything and it will likely exist in the future. I also love like the example of like space tourism will likely be here in the next few years. So like, if you want to be like a space flight attendant, I could see that being being real. You know, there's some of these things that sound so sci fi or unrealistic, but I can totally see them being a reality in the next few years. So that was awesome. <laughs> and I first if I hope you're the first person to go to Mars, if that's still what you want. But if not, maybe you could be the first person to eat chocolate cake on Mars. And I think that would be just as cool. <laughs> and maybe even get more attention. But I think the key there is just everything that's here, you know, with the vision that a lot of people have for space is going to be in space eventually, maybe not look exactly the same way, but no matter what it is that you're passionate about, there's one already stem behind it in some way. We talked about that a couple of seasons ago with the Game Changers first uh, season where we talked about STEM and sports. That's something that I'm particularly passionate about meshing uh, science and ninja warrior and things like that. And it makes me a better ninja, I think, because I understand how the obstacles are designed and how, you know, my body's going to work in certain scenarios. But if it's space, if it's um, under the ocean, there, there's all different kinds of ways in which you can apply the things that you like to stem. And I think particularly the first experience, no matter what it is that you go on to study afterwards, I feel that this experience is going to help you just be able to thrive even more in that space. The, the core values again, the skill sets you, you learn, the technical skills are going to be more and more needed no matter what industry you're in in the future. So um, I think that was a really cool way to explain it with, with everything that we're gonna need in space. Space flight attendant just sounds awesome. Sounds cool. <laughs> and if you, I think people should start putting in the chat, like space, what career? Like what, what is that? <laughs> space chef. Um, you know, whatever pre space president, they said Alyssa for president of Mars in the chat. So um, go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, so I'd like to, to end uh, with just a piece of advice for, for two of our communities right now, right? So one for that young person that may feel that they're in this box right now, whether that's a, a young girl or just a young person in general. Um, What's your one piece of advice for them to show them that they're more than? And then um, from the mentoring perspective, and this could be something that you learned from your father or some other mentor that guided you or something that you're trying to do. What piece of advice do you have for our adults in terms of how do they help these young students um, kind of dream big and do really cool things in the future, like become space flight attendants? Yeah, I mean, definitely for getting yourself out of um, those stereotypes, you know, I think a huge thing is just kind of eventually pushing yourself just to ask, you know, at the end of the day, if you're wanting to do something that is out of the ordinary, just go ahead and ask. Um, the most they can do is say no, and you can always try mm -hmm. something else. But I think communication is so huge. You know, you really know, you never know who someone else knows, what opportunities could lead from that. And especially the way the internet is now, you know, even 
DMing someone on Instagram or like asking, like, hey, do you have any advice? Or, hey, is it possible? You know, some of that, you know, you may not get a response, but, you know, you also might. And so kind of if you're really looking to push out of those boundaries, you know, even those little steps to ask and see who will give that chance on you. Um, because I've been surprised so many times and it was just because I don't think other kids were asking before. Um, so definitely just start, you know, being vocal. And it really can be at really small levels. You know, let's say you are in FIRST Robotics, but maybe you're interested in space, you know, maybe mention like, oh yeah, this stuff is really cool. You know, I might wanna do space robotics in the future, but you know, someone may have a connection to that and may give you some cool advice. So even those little tidbits and saying what you're interested in, just kind of sprinkled here and there in your conversations can really help. And then from the mentor um, perspective, I think it really is, just trying to spin things in very positive lights. You know, um, a good example is, you know, let's say someone is really interested in, I don't know, like let's say being a doctor, but maybe, you know, they're not very good at sciences. You know, it's basically teaching them that, okay, if this is what you're interested in, let's help you out, let's work hard and get there. Not saying, oh, you're not very good at that, maybe you should pick something else. You know, it's encouraging them to realize that, yes, a lot of these cool things do take a, hard, a lot of hard work, but it will be worth it if that's really what they want to do. Also, uh, also, it's also uh, great for kids to kind of change their mind and figure it out as they grow up. So even if they change their mind like 10 times, just continue to support them with the next goal. You know, they can pursue that one just as hard as they did the first one. So just kind of be there as that like word of support. Because sometimes all a kid needs is you just saying like, oh, that's cool. Or like, oh, yeah, you should do that. So even as a mentor, it doesn't have to be, you know, doing absolutely everything for them. Sometimes just those words can make a difference. A hundred percent. And I, I feel like, you know, when kids struggle to tie their shoes, we don't tell them that they're not going to be shoe tying people. And here's your <laughs> pair of Velcro shoes. Like, sorry, kid, right? That we don't give up on that. Eventually, they figure it out. It's stressful or um, a little frustrating at first as an adult trying to help out a child tie their shoes. But we get them there, right? And I feel like it should be the same for math and science because those are going to be extremely important skills. I'd argue more important than being able to tie your shoes. We have other <laughs> solutions for that. Um, but also what you're sharing with the kids, if, you know, DMing uh, people you admire, but also just watching YouTube videos. There's so yeah. much content out there that can help you learn and figure out how they did it or mistakes that were made along the way. Um, even from people, and let's say you are interested in space, from the early Earth space days, right? There's still a lot of videos and content that you can kind of consume and start to learn about that history that you may not have been around for. Um, so I think those are really, really good piece of, it, uh, of advice for, for our community. And um, I just want to give you a last chance to share how we can stay connected with you. Is there anything really cool that's going on soon that you might want to share or just any last parting words for, for the community? Yeah, I guess just last parting words. I mean, I'm really thankful to be able to have this conversation, get to share with you guys. And overall, I just hope that... Um, you're able to find people that inspire you to continue to want to push outside of these boxes. That's always been honestly my number one goal. And the one thing that I've loved so much about social media is that I'm able to speak to kids all over the world and give them tidbits of advice here and there. And so, you know, hopefully you have um, figuring out something that you're interested in. Maybe you can message someone and start uh, getting more details. But overall, always push yourself outside of those boxes because you can definitely achieve whatever it is, whatever it is you want to do. Thank you so much for your time, Alyssa. This was a great conversation. We're going to save it on the channel if anyone wants to come back and look at any of it. Um, definitely follow Alyssa on social media. Stay connected to this community because we're going to have a lot of other great people like Alyssa sharing their stories. And just as we've been mentioning, you're, you're more than any of these boxes that people try to put into you. You're more than even sometimes our own self-doubts that our brain uh, plays games with us. And we're really excited to see what you will all be able to accomplish. And for the adults listening in, it's not too late either, but then also your role in setting up this 
group of students for really cool things that are going to make the world an awesome place, a uh, more inclusive place, um, in a more fun place in general. When we have uh, more students that believe in themselves and have the STEM skills to make things uh, become a reality, it's just going to be um, great. So thank you everyone for being part of this. And thanks again, Alyssa, for joining us. Yeah, and thank we'll you guys. You See ya.